Today we're in one of our lovely large um, off-site collection stores in Helmsley which stores objects from different sites across the whole of the north of English heritage from South Yorkshire up to Hadrian's Wall and that includes objects from Brodsworth and that's what we're going to look at today. Brodsworth has a collection of just about 33,000 objects which tell lots of different stories from stories of everyday people to national events to really localised stories and it's some of those local stories that we're going to look at today by focusing in on various objects within the collection that are linked to royal coronations and royal events and celebrations that happened at Brodsworth and wider around the country. Well today we've picked out a selection of objects from the collection at Brodsworth which showcase and reveal the little stories in Brodsworth collection that are linked to coronations and royal events. So different objects that we can then use to talk about stories about how the community celebrated Brodsworth, how different people celebrated Brodsworth and really how the villagers around and in the Brodsworth estate came together for these important national occasions. When Brodsworth was taken over by English Heritage in 1990, we found many different objects in lots of different parts of the house, in drawers, in cupboards, in wardrobes, um, everything and anything we found in there. And one of the things we found was an enormous collection of Country Life magazines, um, almost a complete span from 1947 to 1981, with only a few, um, only a few editions missing and they're all piled up in one of the bedrooms in, in an enormous pile. And when we look through the Country Life, one of the things that the Country Life magazines did was celebrate royal occasions by having royal related front covers. And it's a selection of those that we've got out to share with you today. So we have a wonderful oral history collection at Brodsworth where we've recorded over the past 30 years members of the Brodsworth household staff who worked in the hall, but also those who worked in the gardens and on the wider estate, and also villagers who have lived in the village for a long time. And we have a lovely clip here of a lady called Christine Bould, who lived in the village from 1974 up until more recently. And she has a lovely memory of the village celebrations for the 1977 Silver Jubilee. When it was Silver Jubilee, 1977, we had a tea, a lovely tea put on in the stable block. She put that on for the villagers and the children all got a mug and there was a lovely party in the park afterwards. All the villagers were there, it was lovely, there was music, there was dancing, and everybody from the village came. It really, it really was lovely. What's really lovely about the Brodsworth collection is the amount of objects that we have that really tell stories of the local community. So what we have here is a very small mechanical pencil with a tortoise shell um, effect colouring and this pencil is inscribed on the top and it says the King's Silver Jubilee May 1935 with the best wishes of the West Riding County Council and these mechanical pencils were given to every school child who was at elementary school within the West Riding County Council in 1935 as a souvenir and as a memento of the royal occasion and this pencil belonged to Reg Taylor and he went on to work on the Brodsworth estate. His whole family actually worked on the Brodsworth estate for many generations. So this is really special to us because it was obviously given to the school children for them to remember their time at school, but also remember the coronation and understand and, and share the joy of such a national celebration. And the Brodsworth estate celebrated the Silver Jubilee of George V um, in style. There was um, a tea on the estate, a tea and a party. There was a bonfire and there was a ladies and gents cricket match that happened. And the opening batting for the cricket match um, was started by Mr. Lana, who was the head gardener at Brodsworth at the time, and Mr. McIntosh, who was one of the tenant farmers. And both Mr. Lana and Mr. McIntosh dressed up in their wise clothes to start the batting. I think they were on the ladies team for the cricket rather than the gents because they were dressed up in their wives clothes and um, but for all we know there was a really lovely sense of camaraderie and excitement around the village 
and we know the school throughout all of its history from when it was formally set up in 1871 after the Education Act. The school really celebrated and encouraged the local school children to enjoy royal occasions. So we know from the school logbooks that they often were given a week's holiday or a day's holiday. The children were generally presented with a souvenir such as um, a mechanical pencil like this or a mug or some other objects we'll see shortly. And it was a really lovely, occasion for the village to get together and just have some fun. Other objects that we have date from a different royal celebration and this is in 1937 which was the coronation of George VI, so a new king. And like the mechanical pencil we have some objects within the collection that link to the school celebrations at Brodsworth School. And these are these two lovely little silver plate spoons. And these were actually only given to us last year by a current volunteer at Brodsworth. And these spoons belong to one of her relatives. So these spoons were given to Brodsworth school children to celebrate the 1937 coronation. And they are stamped on the stem uh, 1937 coronation with a lovely little emblem of George VI and the Queen Consort Elizabeth's head and GR at the top. On the reverse they're made by Mappin and Webb and it's a souvenir from West from WRCC which is again the West Riding County Council and these spoons whilst they would have been given to every child within the locality um, they're very special to us because we know who owned them and who they were given to. So these spoons were owned by a man called Cyril Marshall. And Cyril Marshall was a chauffeur on the Brodsworth estate. So he worked for the Grant, Dal Grant Dalton family. He lived locally on a street called Bill and Row and he worked on the estate for, for much of his life and they were given to us by one of Cyril's relatives only last year. One of the real treasures that we have or two treasures that we have in the Brodsworth collection are these two pamphlets, um, which we believe are very rare. These are possibly the only two that survive. And these showcase and share the coronation celebrations that were held in the village of Hampole in 1937. And Hampole is a village on the Brodsworth estate, so it was owned by the Grant Dalton family. It's a lovely art deco, classic art deco design with the red, white and blue colouring and this shares all of the different celebrations and all of the different events that Hampole Village put on together for the coronation. So the coronation was on May the 12th and their celebrations was also on May the 12th because although George VI's coronation was televised, not many people had a television or were able to view it, so they had their activities on the same day. Charles Grant Dalton, the owner of the Brodsworth estate, he was the president of the Hampole Committee and his wife Sylvia was one of the vice presidents and there was a whole different supervisor, supervisory committee of people involved in setting up and organising the event. It's beautifully printed and gives a really good, a, a complete indication of what the day went like for the villagers. So at quarter past 11 there was a divine service um, at 2pm there was sports, sport competitions, at 4pm there was a village tea with food and drink to eat, another section of sports from half past five till quarter past eight, um, then there was presentation of prizes from the sport and then at half past eight there was a village concert, so a really long day um, and everybody must have got really involved. If we turn the next page it tells us exactly what sports the, the villagers raced in during the day and that had different lengths of handicap races and flat races um, as well as some more fun and ones that I'm sure the children would have got involved with such as a sack race, a flag race, an egg and spoon race, um, a potato race, a whistle and bun race and if you don't know what a whistle and bun race it's a competitive eating race um, so you eat as many buns as you can until the whistle blows um, and this was a mixed competitive eating, in eating race so both men and women would have taken part 
and you ate as many buns as you could over a certain distance until the whistle blew. And there was a pillow and pole fight um, and there was a slow bicycle race, so ride your bike as slowly as possible rather than get there as quickly as possible. And then finally there was a men's trimming competition, um, which I can only assume was a competition to do with trimming moustaches and beards from the gents who attended. And what's also really nice about this pamphlet is that it shows how local it was. So it's published by um, the Doncaster Chronicle Company in Scott Lane in Doncaster. So a really local population. Other villages on the Brodsworth estate also celebrated. So Hampole is a village and Brodsworth village also celebrated. Um, and they had a tea at one of the farms on the Brodsworth estate on Elms Farm. And in Brodsworth's oral history collection, we can really look into those stories and find out the ways that coronation and royal events really affected people's lives within the village. And we have a lovely clip of one lady, um, Louis Nicholson, who was a head housemaid at Brodsworth, and she actually met her future husband at the 1937 coronation party held in Brodsworth village, um, just in, in the next village called Pickburn, and we can listen to a clip of Louis telling us exactly how that went. They gave a tea for all the village when George the Sixth was his coronation. They hadn't a room big enough in the village for them all, so Mr Morrill, he had a farm and he had a big barn he says, I'll find a room for you. And they cleared it all out and they whitewashed the barn and they had the tea in there. And we were all let out. That was the only time we were ever all out together. And then at night, there was a dance in the schoolroom and we went to that. And that's where I met my husband. This group of objects here is a real mixture. So we have a group of objects which are all connected with the 1953 coronation, so the late Queen Elizabeth II, and they're separated into, into two groups. So on this side we have very much mass-produced objects that were produced in the many, many thousands and sold and distributed around the country, including um, this coronation programme, the approved souvenir programme, which goes through in great detail the route of the coronation procession, all of the people who were going to attend, um, the order of the day, details of the Queen, um, all of the, the crown jewels and all of the details that anybody who was not attending the coronation, which was most of the country, they would be able to follow that within one of the souvenir booklets. We also have modern souvenirs for the coronation, such as this transfer printed goblet, and this transfer printed mug, um, which was one of the mugs that was given to each of the Brodsworth school children um, to celebrate the 1953 coronation. If we move aside these objects, which are very common, and you can often find them and are still able to acquire them today, we also have this very special object, which is absolutely unique and we're very lucky to have it. Um, it's just a very simple piece of lined paper written on in ink, but what it is, and it says this on the front of the page, it's the Coronation Fund for 1953, the balance sheet. So what this document is, is it shares with us and lists all of the activities that the Brodsworth villagers got involved with to raise money for their village celebrations, for their parties, um, and their village teas and things like that for the coronation fund. So they had a committee and the document goes through in real great detail everything they did to raise money. And the document tells us they had a whist drive, so card games at the school. They held a coffee evening at the hall, so Brodsworth Hall. Um, they had a film show. There was various concerts at local farms. There was a dance, it says here, Miss Roarding and Mr Atkinson's dance. There was different whist drives at people's houses. There was a youth club dance. Um, there was another whist drive at another tenant farmers. Um, and they um, sold surplus um, 
items that people didn't need, including food. This last entry is a sale of surplus tongue that people bought. And the activity that raised the most money for the Coronation Fund was the coffee evening at Brodsworth Hall, which raised £43.17 and shillings for the fund. And what's really amazing about this document is that the next side lists all of the expenses. So it goes into great detail and shows us really what was involved in setting up and organising these village celebrations in 1953. And this must replicate the efforts that went across the country up and down. And it gives us detail that often we wouldn't know. So we know there was um, a party and a dance we also now know that they hired piano for the concert and the dance. They hired a piano from West Riding County Council. Um, they bought food, so they bought tongue and other meat from a local butcher. They bought paper for programmes. They bought sweet bags for the children. They had to buy decorations for the school. Um, they also had to buy greaseproof paper, envelopes for prize money, um, fancy dress and sports prizes for the fancy dress competition at the school and for sports prizes on the estate. And they also got in touch and ordered items from very specific companies, which is lovely for us to know. Um, for example, they ordered uh, ice cream from Mazzarella, which is an ice cream company um, based around Doncaster. Um, they bought par um, sweets from Parkinson's, it says here Parkinson's for sweets, and Parkinson's was a local Doncaster sweet company, most famous for making butterscotch. They bought chocolates from Smidley's. Uh, they bought a new school flag to celebrate the occasion from Owen and Owen. Um, they bought tomatoes from Philip Wood. For the teas, so the drinks and the cakes, um, they bought that from Doncaster Cooperative Society. Um, the televisions that they hired was Evans & Co. And the Queen's coronation was televised. There weren't many televisions in Brodsworth Village at the time, but we know that um, the coronation fund hired televisions to be put in the infant school at Brodsworth School, so all of the villagers could go and watch the coronation if they wanted to together. And they hired the televisions from Evans & Co. Um, they acquired minerals and, and various drinks from Miss Roarding, um, and Miss Roarding was the local postmistress. Um, and they also paid caretakers fees for the cleaning, of all, cleaning up of the event afterwards at Brodsworth School. Um, and they also bought various different ices, um, different, uh, different meats, different sandwiches. And what this document does, it allows us to go into really great detail about the efforts that the villagers went into to celebrate the coronation and which hopefully may replicate the efforts that people will go into today to celebrate the coronation this year in 2023 for King Charles III. We know on the day at Brodsworth the coronation party was actually in typical British fashion was spoiled by the weather um, and it did rain so some of the sports were cancelled but they did have a concert and a party in the evening to celebrate.